Hello family, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Angela and here on this lovely channel, <laughs> I talk about beauty, fashion, and lifestyle. Oh, I was gonna say challenges <laughs> for women over 40. Let me start it over. Hello family, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Angela and here on this channel, I create beauty, fashion, and lifestyle content in particularly for women over 40. But today's video is not for the women over 40. It's for the women that are coming up on their 40s or women that have just gotten into their 40s. And I'm gonna be talking about 10 things that women between the ages of 40 and 60, some of the things that they go through. Not all these things will apply to every woman, but most of them will. Now, I'm a little long-winded when I'm passionate about things, so go ahead and get your coffee. I got me some coffee and one of my many, many 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 <laughs> starbucks mugs and this one is from the dominican republic i collect starbucks mugs one day i'm gonna have me a whole wall with my starbucks mug display um so if you ever want to send me something i'm just saying starbucks mug from a, a different state i think i have now i have around 65 or 70 from all over the world it's just a thing i just love them so I am excited about today's topic and I wanted to do this video because I was sitting back. I'm just go ahead and lean over. <laughs> That's why I get come comfortable. I was sitting and I was thinking about the day that I was sitting in the cafeteria at the hospital that I used to work with, with one of my really, really, really close girlfriends, Sheila. I have two girlfriends over the age of 60 and I think every woman should have some older girlfriends but anyway I have two girlfriends over the age of 60 and Sheila is one of them I was sitting there with her and her really really close girlfriend Phyllis and they were talking to me <laughs> about menopause I will never forget it I was either in my late 30s or very very early 40s when I tell you I was sitting there and my mouth was wide open and I was like I know you lying I know you lying, I know you lying. I remember leaving that conversation and going to talk to my close girlfriends, my sisters, Alicia and Carmen, and, and having a whole conversation about what Phyllis and Sheila told me, because we were, and we were like, what? What? Ain't no way, ain't no way. Um, way, absolutely way. They, they didn't lie about it anything they did not lie so this video is for the young ladies that'll be coming up so that you can say somebody told me auntie angela sister angela and i don't have any problem being called the auntie i've been an auntie since i was 20 i see i i was the first to have the grandbaby in my family at 19 and the next one came around at 21 22 22 so i've been an auntie since i was 22 so i don't have any problem hey nieces with somebody calling me auntie no problem at all because i have about 10 nieces um i want you to i want you to hear it from the horse's mouth um, i'm gonna tell you i won't get into explicit detail but i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you some stuff that you um you may experience um some good and some bad but all truth from my experience and from the experience of my friends so if you like to hear those 10 things and for the ladies that are over 40 i want you to know i want you to let me know did I hit the nail on the head? I, I want you to tell me if, if I got this right. And if I didn't, I want you to tell me that too. Now, I'll go ahead and talk about these things, so let's get started. So I'm gonna start off. <laughs> I'm going to start off with something good because I don't want the whole video to be bad. Uh, I'm going to start off with something good that's going to happen to you. I'm just, it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. And I've talked about this before on my videos, but uh, again, this video, my channel is winnable for it, so you might not have seen it. And the first thing that, one of the things that happens to you between the ages of 40 to 50 is your good, good village, your good girlfriend group really solidifies itself. Uh, I think I met my close friends all except for Ronnie. I met and Angie. I met them all in my 30s, my early 30s, mid 30s, mid 30s. But at that time, as women, we're just trying to figure out our life and kind of what's going on. And we don't really have as much time as we'd like to dedicate to our girlfriends. And we don't know who we are as women. So we're not, most of us, I know I can say for me, I was not as comfortable in my skin whatsoever as I am now. So I met my good girlfriends, 
but those relationships became solid. They became solid in my 40s and the people that were that were not there I don't want to say to serve me, but they were not there to uplift me have kind of dwindled off. There were a couple of more there are a couple of stragglers, but for the most part those relationships are solidified and they become your life long friends. And one of the reasons that those relationships and though that, that number gets so much smaller is you really get to see who they are as women and they get to see who you are. And sometimes those things don't align. I was just watching, I watch a lot of, uh, a lot of internet stuff. I was listening to Tavis Smiley, who I haven't seen him in a long time, but I used to love to listen to him. And some was, someone was asking him about this politics, so I won't even talk about that. But anyway, he was describing a situation and he referred to Jesus. And he was talking about Jesus had 12 disciples, 12, 12 disciples that he chose himself. And now that is a large circle of friends, like a large circle of ride or die friends. 12 is, uh, I think there's too many. And I say there's probably too many because that's a lot of people. There are going to be some, some personalities that are just not going to clash and it's just going to make for an awkward situation. But anyway, Jesus had 12 disciples that he chose for himself. And three of those disciples betrayed him. Jesus, the imperfect, the God in the flesh who was, who was perfect. Um, had three people to betray him and I wrote it down because I wanted to get it correctly. I wanted to give the credit to Tavis. So Tavis put it like this and it was so eloquent. Scooter! Stop that scooter! The three people that betrayed Jesus, the first everybody knows, it was Judas. Do you know Judas betrayed Jesus for three pieces of silver? Picture that, like he betrayed Jesus for three pieces of silver. Thomas betrayed Jesus, but he, Thomas didn't betray Jesus. He doubted Jesus. He doubted that Jesus was who he said he was. When Jesus died and he rose again and he was before Thomas, Thomas doubted that it was him. He didn't trust that it was him. He didn't believe, although he was already told that it was going to happen. He doubted him. That, that is betrayal. He didn't, he doubted him. You know, I just, it just blows my mind. And Peter was the third one. He denied Jesus three times before the rooster crowed. Like, so even and so I use that analogy as a perfect example of why your village your the people that surround you the people that are gonna uplift you for the rest of your life not family um, though that number just dwindles down to that fa those foundational friends and it's a wonderful thing to have it truly truly is it's like your sister from another mister so that is something indeed that if you have your girlfriend group, you will probably meet those women in your 30s, but those relationships will solidify in your 40s. Now, if, if you don't have a good group of girlfriends, uh, several things could be the rationale. One reason is you have, to be a, you have to be a good girlfriend in order to keep good girlfriends, and that takes some work. It's not a lot of work, it's not hard work, but it takes some time, some dedication, some loyalty, some commitment to uplifting those people, not thinking about self. When you focus on uplifting someone else, they're gonna automatically, they're, they're gonna pe be people who gravitate towards you and gonna be willing and able and have the desire to uplift you too. So that is one thing that's gonna happen to you between the ages of 40 and 60. Now let's get on to the it's, it is what it is. Uh, the second thing that's gonna start happening to you is you're gonna have some metabolic changes. That body is going to go through some stuff. <laughs> she going to start, she, she going to start talking to you. The, the knees are going to start cracking when you get out of bed. You, you're not going to, you're not going to be as limber as you used to be. Stuff is, you're going to be more stiff. Your muscle mass is going to, your muscle mass is going to start to decrease and your fat mass is going to start increasing. But if you consistently exercise, you can keep that muscle mass, math. <laughs> But if you exercise, you don't have to worry about that so much. Your muscle mass will maintain itself. You, you're, you'll better have be more flexible if you're stretching before you exercise. And even if you're doing something as simple as walking 30 minutes a day, but you really, really need to do some weight lifting to make certain that your muscles, like I can tell that uh, 
the, the muscles in this arm aren't as formed as the muscle in this arm because I had surgery because I wasn't using it. So you can just look at just right here. They just look so different. But make certain that you exercise. But there are so many changes that are gonna happen in your body between 40 and 60. Like one day you'll be putting your makeup on and, and next thing you know, you're trying to put your eyeliner on, but where does extra skin come on my eyelid? Like it's just hanging, like where did that come from? I can't just open my eye and put my eyelashes on anymore. I gotta, I gotta pull the skin up and put the eyelash. <laughs> And put the eyelashes on. Now all of a sudden your skin is a lot drier than it used to be. I don't understand why my skin is drier. Now, you don't get as many pimples. You, I rarely get a pimple. Watch, I get one next week. Um, I rarely, if ever, get pimples. So that's something you don't have to worry about. Another good thing is, as you, good and bad. Good, good and bad. For most women, the, the density or the, the amount of hair you have everywhere. Um, will start to decrease or start to thin out. Now, the hair on your head will last a lot longer than the hair everything else, everywhere else. Now, I remember that I was shaving my armpits every day or every other day. I just, I had to, I had to keep them shaved because the, the, it was growing and I didn't want to see it. I, I, that's just not for me and, <laughs> and my house. Uh, but now, I may have to shave my armpits once every three weeks, once a month. I guess the, the few little stragglers that grow, they're very, very fine and you can't even see them. That is, that's a plus. That is a plus. On the other hand, the hair on top of my head now, I've been getting treatments and stuff and I've been using stuff in my hair for well over a year now. So I'm seeing some um, thickness and some growth come back, but that came with a huge dermatology bill. Came with a, <laughs> a lot of medication putting on my head and um, uh, from what she told me, I'm gonna have to use it for a lifetime if I want to maintain some of the thickness in the top of my head. So didn't like that, didn't like that. The hair around the edges was fine. This is right up in here. That's why I cut my hair off. Yeah, that may, that may happen to you as well. And, and not just the thickness of the hair, the hair texture will start to change, especially if you start taking medications and stuff. That's a whole different story. It, it can change the texture of your hair. So don't say that auntie didn't tell you. Those are, what, I got my notes here. Let me see if I didn't miss anything. Nope, didn't miss anything. Though. Those are some of the metabolic changes that will occur between the ages of 40 and 60. Again, if you exercise, if you exercise, you will see a significant difference in your muscles and your flexibility compared to other people that are in your age range. It's just, it's just phenomenal. Like I see Ronnie, y'all see Ronnie. Now, I, and the only reason I know this is because I've, I've, been, I've lived in Ronnie's house for a week or two at a time, several times, and then we vacation together. Ronnie gets up and she stretches every single day. I'm not talking about the five or six little stretches that I do. I'm talking about Ronnie has a whole stretch routine that lasts 20 to 30 minutes. I, I've never seen somebody over, the, over 60 that flexible. It don't make no sense. And I'm, I'm trying to get there though. I'm, I'm striving to be where Ronnie is. I'm gonna do better. Okay, next. Next, you probably, if you watch TikTok, you've probably seen some of these things and it is so funny. You get to an age, uh, and it's usually later in your 40s, 50s, depending on how old your parents are, where you start to somewhat parent your parent or your parents are aging. Your, your grandparents are, have definitely aged or they've passed away, but your parents are aging as well. So now you're taking on some some responsibilities and then sometimes at the, end, at the end of their life you may have to take on full responsibility of them, their finances, their care, making certain they have their doctor's appointments, making certain they're not being scammed, just making certain they're taking care of themselves. I don't have to worry about most of that right now. I'm not parenting my mother but my daughter and I do look out. We, we make sure we, we're constantly talking. We're making sure things are okay. My mother still works part-time. She wants to stay busy, but, but we're, we're in constant communication. We are in constant communication. She and I, or my daughter and um, her, are definitely on a weekly basis without fail. I just so happen to be lucky and my mother is very healthy, has always been very healthy. She's 70, ooh, ooh. I'm not gonna tell her age. She's past 70 photo. I can promise you that much. But she's very healthy for her age. As a matter of fact, I sent her a, tennis, a couple of tennis dresses. <laughs> she looks so cute. <laughs> and her tennis dresses. And I sent her some cheetah print sneakers. Cause why not? Cause she is my mama. 
But um, but we're still looking out, making sure she's okay. So you may have to it may have to start taking on some responsibilities. If if not responsibilities, you just just need to make certain that they're okay, that things are going the way they're going, and you need to actually lay eyes. The, the talking on the phone is one thing, but you 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 need to go because things will look sometimes a lot different if you walk into their home and just kind of take a look and see what's going on. Just I'm just I'm not putting my mama business out there. We, we start to have to uh, parent our parents at this age, um, unfortunately, and it can be challenging. I feel sorry for my daughter. I'm gonna be good. I'm, I'm gonna be good. Right. I'm, I'm gonna try to be good. That's it. I, I can't make no promises. Another thing that happens between the ages of 40 and 60, and this is if you've had children, um, we, be, we start to become empty nesters. I became an empty nester in my 30s, but I did have my baby quite early. I had um, Shadia when I was 19, and it was devastating. It was devastating. I cried every single day for several months. Um, it, you, it's, it's hard if your child is active or your children are active. It's even hard when I've had friends when the first one leaves and there's still one there, it's still difficult. I can't imagine having several and then bam, 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 they're all gone. But it is very difficult. It is it's, it's just really stressful. You're worried about what they're doing and if they're taking care of themselves. Now, I, I tried to make certain that I raised my daughter to be as independent as possible How and, and taught her everything I felt like she needed to know. I told her everything that I knew. But I still worried c consistently and constantly, not to the point where um, I couldn't get any sleep at night, but I missed her a lot. Cause she would go, we're on the go, 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 go. Cause she was always active in school in these different um, groups. And she was in the band and she was a cheerleader. So I was always at the school for something or another. And then it just all stopped. It just, <laughs> and you think, if you, you think, oh, this is going to be a wonderful time. It, it is after you get over the grief of not having that person in the house like it's so quiet it is so it's almost eerie it's just so quiet like you you sit your cup right here or you put your shoes right here and everything in the house is where you left it it's just it's just weird it, um i didn't like it at first but then it, it became really nice well you just move and you ain't got to worry about what is the you got a babysitter or what time somebody's coming home or if you like it's just yeah it's great it, it's great um that is that is a stage that you would definitely have to go through if you have children and you're between the ages of 40 and 60. the next stage you may have to go to and this is for the married ladies um you may, if you have a husband, you, you may have to go through some midlife crisis with your husband. I haven't had to go through that yet. Um, I, I saw some stuff peeking its head and we kind of, we, we had conversations, lots of conversations, but I pray God my husband didn't have a midlife crisis and go out and buy some crazy sports car. He, no, I, I, I haven't had to go through that yet, but I've had friends who have, and it's, it's not, it's not easy to, to witness. And they look traumatized and troubled, but uh, my friends have made it through. So if you're married, just know that your your husband may come to a point where he's he's having issues and he don't know what's going on. And I, I call it menopause, where the testosterone levels are start, they start going down just like, did you all know that their testosterone levels start going down significantly, like our estrogen levels start going down. Look at men who are over 40 and a lot of them they just start getting wider and wider in their midsection. That is mostly due to um, the decrease in testosterone, which decreases their energy levels, which decreases the body ability to protect itself from diseases. It just has a horrible effect on the man's body. So when we're going through menopause, they're definitely going through some stuff as well. The next thing that women 40 through 60 go through, and it is horrible, is at this stage in our lives, Either we or someone we love or someone we're very close to or we know or someone that's close to someone we know starts to go through some sort of traumatic illnesses and it could be cancer or some sort of anything like that and it, it, it is exhausting it is exhausting for the people of course who are going through it is traumatizing for them it's life altering it's change it's life changing and if, it, if it's 
us that's going through it, I personally have not had to have to go through anything like that. I did, I was diagnosed with type two diabetes in my thirties and it was traumatizing for me. And it was extremely traumatizing for me because at the time that I got my diagnosis, I was the diabetic educator for my unit. So I knew everything there was to know. I knew exactly what this disease could potentially do to my body. I cried, I cried so hard. Oh my God, I cried and I cried and I cried. My doctor called me and we were good friends and she said, Angela, I got some, it's got some bad news for you. But that is nothing compared to being diagnosed with, diagnosed with cancer. But typically between 40 and 60, someone you know, or someone you love, or someone close to someone you know or love is going to be diagnosed with some sort of traumatic illness. And if it's not you, your goal is your job is to support that person as much as you can. Just ask every now and then, is there anything you need? Can I, what can I help you? What can I help you with? What can I do for you? Just make that phone call once every two weeks, once a week, depending on how you feel or how, how close you are with that person. Just call and ask because you don't know what to do. You just have to ask, what can I do for you? Sometimes they just need a hug. Sometimes you just need to go. You just need to be there. Just sit there with them and just let them cry on your shoulders. But it happens and it happens to some amazing people. And it's just so sad to witness this difficult for the person that's going through it, but it's also difficult for the people that are around them that love and care about them. So if it is not you and if it's someone you know, make certain that you can be there for them to support them through that journey. The next thing that happens, and this is a good one, if you are a parent, then perhaps if your children want children, or sometimes they don't want children, but they have children anyway, you become a grandparent. And I can tell you, let me take a sip of my coffee. Now I had a baby. I only had, I only gave birth. I have three babies, but I gave birth to one. Ben Gate blessed me with two more. And I love my baby. I, I love her dearly. She changed my life so much for the better. But, and I'm saying this because she knows and he knows, the moment, I laid eyes on Gabriel, and I gave him that name because of the angel Gabriel. We call him Gabe. But the moment I laid eyes on Gabe, my soul, my soul was quenched. It was filled. It was just, I, I cannot explain it. Every person that is a grandparent who laid eyes on their grandchild, who held their grandchild for the first time, understands exactly uh, hopefully exactly what I'm talking about. It's one of those situations where it leaves you void of words. Um, it is life altering. It changes your entire perception of the world. It makes you so cognizant of what's going on. You, you then want to be a better person. You then immediately know that you would put your life on the line for this person. I would give my life for this person. You want to protect them. You want to help them grow. You want them to help them to be a better person. You want to give them all the gifts and all the joys and all the love and the laughter that life has for, for them. It is, it, it was one of the most life altering moments of my life of my life. Now I loved him. My daughter was pregnant. She just nurtured her stomach. She, she fell in love with him. And I, you know, I was like, my baby, my baby's pregnant. But when I saw him, oh my God, I saw him before everybody else. Of course. Um, it's a life altering, wonderful, wonderful experience that I hope every parent gets to experience if their children won't children. Another thing that happens between the ages of 40 and 60 is your priorities tend to switch. And it happens a lot of times when women have children, but even not everybody has children, but between the ages of 40 and 60, something in our brain says, okay, I have, <laughs> I have more years behind me than I have in front of me. And so I want the years in front of me to have more quality. So I'm going to nurture my friendships. I'm going to take the vacations. I'm going to spend a little extra money. I'm going to eat the, I'm going to go to the gourmet restaurant. I'm going to buy myself the nice shoes. 
not necessarily the most beautiful shoes, but the shoes that made me go, ooh, I want that, I, I want that, I worked hard, I really want something nice for myself. Between the ages of 40 and 60, most of us like, let me go get it. Let me go get it. Your, your focus kind of pulls back from everybody else. Your goal then becomes making certain that you as a human being are getting everything that you need, that your cup is being full, and that, that life is going to be the best life that you're going to be able to afford moving forward. It's, it's such a nice, 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 refreshing feeling. You also come into your own. You also figure out who you are as a woman. And when that happens, girl, the amount of cares that you give about what somebody says about you, <laughs> They go into the negative. They go into the negative. They're, at that point, they're very, like right now, I'm 54. There are so, there are probably, I could probably put them on, I could probably get to my, get my village, um, but they're definitely less than 10. Uh, people who could say something to me that would hurt my feelings. You, I, and I get comments all the time, not quite as many as I used to though, but I, I, I do get comments quite often where somebody will say something negative or the, maybe that they wouldn't say, they may not feel like it's negative, but you wouldn't have said that if you saw me in person. I think the last one was, um, I'm glad you, and it's still yellow, I'm gonna cut my hair. I'm glad you got, dyed your hair blonde because I didn't like that white, it didn't look good on you. <laughs> I can't imagine somebody telling me that to my face. I, I, that's just, that's so rude to me. That's one of those, there's certain things, if it's not nice, if it's not gonna uplift someone, um, if it's not a compliment, you, just, you can just keep it to yourself. I do, <laughs> I do. It's, it's a skill, it's a skill because um, that, that you just figure out that what people think about you and how they feel about you is their business. And it is their business. And you, when somebody comes to tell you, so-and-so says, so, I, I, I don't wanna hear it, that's their business, I don't care. I do not care, I don't even want, I do not want to hear it. I don't wanna hear it, because the whole situation is gonna irritate me. It's just gonna irritate, I don't wanna hear it, I, do, I don't care, I, I don't care. You, you start wearing what you wanna wear, that wearing stuff that makes you feel happy. You start doing stuff that makes you feel happy and you really don't care about what other people say. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful place to be, because as we were growing up as young girls, you all were like, oh, how does this look? What do you think? You, you always asking somebody, what do you think? What do you think? The people that I asked, what do you think? Are those people in these in these categories unless it's um, a business deal or something I'm, I don't have a lot of knowledge about because I'm always willing to learn if I don't have a no lot of knowledge about it and I see someone that I feel is an expert in that area I will ask I have no problems with that but the amount of care that I give about everything else it's a great place to be you just wait and the last thing that I want to talk about um, just so y'all know <laughs> my camera cut off I'm recording this part for the second time but anything um, is menopause and hear me when I say hear me when I say um, it's different for every woman it is different from every for every woman but the symptoms um, are the same for every woman now you some women go through menopause really fast Sheila went through menopause very fast not me still going through it um, it is horrible. It is everything that you hear it is. It is, it is when you have those hot flashes, it literally feels like somebody has, you, you're standing up and somebody has put a bucket with some gasoline in it and lit it and, and the, the, it's not gonna burn you, but the amount of heat that hits you all of a sudden, it's nauseating. And it's, it's so hot that you just want to strip butt naked. I don't care if you in church. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. I don't care where you are. It is so intensely hot. It's, I don't understand. If I could get a hold of Eve, I don't know why she did us. She did us a dirty. She did us dirty. If I could get a hold of her, I would, I would 
before she bit that apple. Please give it to Adam a bite. <laughs> Somebody else need to carry this burden. This is too much. It is a horrible. It is horrible. Everybody experienced the start of menopause differently. I had one hot flash in July. Met Ben in August. I had one hot flash in August. Again, I didn't know I was having hot flashes. I was, it was, it was hot in July. I was in, in North Carolina. I thought it was some, I didn't know what it was. In August, I was back in Saudi. It was still hot. I just, I didn't know what it was. Didn't, didn't think. Cause I was in my, um, yeah, I was in my mid forties. So I, I thought, you know, I, maybe at 50, I, nope, I started early. And then in September, they bam, 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 bam. They hit me like this week. And then the next week I had one this week. Then I had another one the next week. And then, then they just, they were just coming. And I just, I felt like I was gonna lose my mind. I, I, I felt like I was gonna, I'm, I will lie for you before I lie to you. I felt like I was gonna lose my mind. I went to the doctor and I was like, you have got to do something. Now hear me again when I say, choose your physician wisely. If you go to your physician and you're talking about your menopause symptoms and they are not listening, go to somebody else. They do not respect you. Go to somebody else. I went to my physician and was telling him that what was going on. And I said, I feel like I'm losing my mind. I feel like I'm going crazy. And my emotions were all over the place. I couldn't think. And it was just, it was just like, it was like a living anxiety attack, like 24 seven. That man gave me some antidepressants. And I would have done anything. I took one pill. <laughs> Remember, I stayed up all night long i paced the floor i feel like i was going crazy i was like oh no i don't i don't i, I i'm not a drug take i don't like i do drugs I, I don't like not being in control of my body so you're not gonna see me out drunk somewhere i don't like mm -mm, mm -mm. um I, I i pulled the pills in the toilet i sure did uh, i know i wasn't supposed to do that but i was like uh-uh i don't and i choked i went the next day because i went the, i worked at the hospital we could get a different doctor i got a female physician had the same conversation I had with him. She immediately put me on hormone replacement therapy, which I will be taking for the rest of my life. Now I know the old data, the old research says you're only supposed to take it for a few years. That data is um, obsolete. Um, the new data says that you can take it forever. I'm taking it forever because the symptoms uh, are just horrible. And also the lack of estrogen flowing in your body increases the chances of inflammatory processes throughout every organ throughout every cell it just protects the lining of everything it protects your body from all these inflammatory processes and if you you can't wait until after you go through menopause to go back and get the hormone replacement therapy you need to start taking it when the hormones are start start decreasing so i'm taking it forever i don't want i don't want i don't want them issues i don't want the issues i don't want the cranky bones i, I don't mm -mm. i feel just as healthy for a 54 year old i feel extremely healthy and i'm so happy i'm not i'm, I'm, I'm i don't i i I really appreciate the quality of life that I have and I want to maintain that as much as possible. I want to maintain my flexibility. I want to maintain my bone density. I want, I want to make certain my muscle mass is not significantly creeping down here because of lack of, lack of estrogen. I'm taking, I'm taking it all. And you have to take both. You can't take one and not take the other. Now I know there's some sort of cream they've come out with. Uh, it's, it's new. I'll, I'll be watching that. But menopause is, is, is everything negative that you heard it was. It is, you can be somewhere and you may just have the grand old time and you break out in a sweat. I mean, sweat through every makeup uh, setting spray that you ever think you're gonna have. Your, your eyes started when I, had the hot, when I had the hot flashes, I would be laying up against Ben and he'd be like, honey, he called it slip and slide. Honey, you about to slip and slide. He would feel my body heat increasing before I would. And it just felt like somebody just lit, uh, you know that blow that blowtorch gun. <laughs> it felt like it feels like somebody is just just shooting it around you. Well, it's not it's not touching you, but the heat from it. 
it is horrible. And you, do you, if you ever see women just grab, just, just reaching for something, just fanning, because they're trying to do anything to get that heat down. It just, and it hits like that, and it, la it doesn't last long. But for that few minutes that it lasts, it is torture. And the night sweats. I would wake up in the middle of the night and my entire sheet, bottom sheet and top sheet will be soaked like as if I, somebody had poured a glass full of water on the bed completely. And it wakes, it would wake me up because it would, I'm cold nature. I would sweat, have the hot flash in my sleep. Then I would get cold from this honey, getting up in the middle of the night, two o'clock in the morning, go take a shower, stripping the bed, put it. I was like, I can't do this. I cannot, it, 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 this is bad. Just, just auntie, auntie Angela, sister Angela is telling you what it's like now. You do with that what you will. But it, it is bad. All the changes that go through your, that go on, that transpire, you can research it, but um, it's coming. But just know that you can make it through. You can make it through and the length of time that you go through menopause definitely varies per person. Um, your mother will be an indicator of what it's going to be like for you. And I remember my mama going through menopause when I was in nursing school. And I remember her saying, I feel like I'm going crazy. And I was like, oh my God. And I remember her just, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. <laughs> just fanning. And she looked miserable. And yes, I was absolutely miserable when I started going through it as well. But um, I, don't, I don't really know what to say about it, about it except for lean on your friends. <laughs> just, just talk it out. You, you can do it. You, you, you can do it. You can make it through. It's bad. It, it is bad. Just, just so you know. Just um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. I'll try to answer them for you. If I don't answer them, some, some of my sisters who have gone through, please answer the questions for the young ladies who haven't. If they have any questions, if I don't get, if you don't see a reply from me, that means I didn't see it. Go ahead and try to answer the questions for, for our nieces. Um, that's it. Lord have mercy. Have a blessed day. Well, that's it, family. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you want me to do more videos like this in the future. If if, some, if I get a, a wild idea or when I have a chit chat conversation about life, because I, I do like to talk about life. Um, I really enjoyed this video. Now, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have the most amazing day and I hope you have a great weekend and I will see you all on Sunday. Bye bye.